Yes, here we are. Here we go again on my own. No, is that no good? Nobody's into that one. Oh, that's now. perfect. <laughs> I liked it. I liked it. I enjoyed it. We surely be doing Alexander Hamilton. I'm I don't know the Alexander song. Alexander Hamilton. No, I don't want to watch it before Unk I've version. seen it. I want to watch it. It's just one song, Georgia, for a little girl. God. <laughs> Yeah, God. I'm definitely not going to watch that right now because I will break into tears. All right. Good afternoon. Today is Friday, April 10th, 2020. Today we're going to talk about today at Apple at home, the pets of Apple support, and all the other wonderful things that Apple is doing right now because this is the iMore Show. And joining us today on the iMore Show is expert therapist georgia dow of anxiety-videos.com welcome georgia i i want us to ask everyone i hope you are all safe and doing okay get I hope, comfy i hope everyone is safe as well and if you're not our hearts are with you it's a hard time we're with you listen to us hopefully it will not make you laugh because that might make you cough <laughs> And also joining us on the show today is Joe Keller, Assistant Managing Editor of iMore. How are you doing today, Joe? I'm doing all right. I'm a little good. tired, but I'm doing all right. Staying healthy, staying happy? Yes. Good, good, good. And of course, joining us from his throne at YouTube is YouTube's favorite tech analyst, Renee Ritchie. Welcome, Renee. Alexander Hamilton. Oh, I thought this was the Hamilton <laughs> Zoom. I'm so this is Renee now. Ritchie from on YouTube. Ernero oh. Itchy. Allow me, <laughs> allow myself to introduce me. This is just gonna be so awkward. Uh, I'm so <laughs> glad to I'm so glad to see you all. It makes me uh so happy. Yeah. Um I was just thinking about your your attempt at the Hamilton musical. I, it would be pretty cool if we could all four sing along, but I just don't know any of those songs. I think Can I you do a sick burn version? Ones. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Hamilton! It would just be so good. <laughs> oh, that's great. Um, okay, so let's get started. So the first thing that I wanted to talk about is today, um, Apple uh, l launched another one of their uh, always wonderful commercials, videos. Um, but today there's one that really got to me. It's called um, Creativity Goes On. And I just wanted to bring it up because 10 minutes before the show, I broke down in tears because of just the absolute sweetness of it. So you're definitely going to want to check that one out on YouTube. Go to Apple's, um, their YouTube channel. and It's it's the first one up today right now. It's Creativity so Goes On. It just, it, it's it's reminding us that even though we're all in these very you know hard times right now, awkward places, we can't get together and do things. We're finding ways to be creative, and like I, maybe part of what made me cry is that um, my friends in in Sacramento, we're kind of trying to do that sort of thing right now. We're planning shows, shows where we're in our own house doing things, but we're like grouping up on Instagram and and things like that, trying to share all of our musical stuff together so that we can kind of keep going. And it, it really just kind of hits home to remember that, you know, we're all, we're all still doing things to be creative, even when we can't get out there and be creative with each other. So I just wanted to bring that up and have everybody it watch it. So well edited too, because like there was a, such a disparity in content types. There was photos of different aspect ratios. There was pe some people doing the beloved social vertical video. There was some more classic video and they used a series of like, uh, pillar and what are the other boxes letter and pillar boxes and they had music they didn't do any ken burns which i thought was interesting because usually the trick you do is like you slowly float in or out or pan left to right to make fake movement out of still images and they just sort of let it sit there and the music was on point and it just it <laughs> came together so nicely yeah Apple it's does such a good job of making you feel something always and i think right now people need to have good emotional feelings we need a little bit of distraction from the constant media of doom and gloom all around us. So, yeah, I, I, I've been trying to purposefully not have any kind of emotions right now. I'm only doing fun, happy things or watching horror movies because those are actually very. Cathartic. They're the same. Of the same. <laughs> Lori's like they totally deserved it. That what that clown did to them totally had it coming. Get it. <laughs> <laughs> yep. It's pretty good, but yeah. So it's it's just a really sweet thing to to watch. So check it out, everybody. 
Um, and then to follow up with that, another awesome thing that Apple is doing right now that they just announced today at Apple at home, which is um, lots of today at Apple type um, uh, sessions, um, but things that you can do at home because the support staff for today at Apple are actually doing their own videos. So you can just watch their video and learn as if you were there in store with them. It's pretty okay. awesome. Renee, you, I know that you have attended some Today at Apple related things, usually to cover it in a media sense, yeah. but, um, and Georgia, I think your kids have done some Today at Apple. So do you think this is a, like, how do, how do you think this works? Is this going to be a great oh, thing? Good. Yeah, so, I was waiting for this. Like, I like I wasn't waiting in that I knew they would do it. I was waiting in that man if they could just pull this off because it's such a big part of the Apple value prop. Like people forget when you buy an iPhone, it's not just like at a carrier store here, take it when it breaks, ha ha, screw you. It's like you know you you get all this extra content. Like sure, there's iWork and GarageBand and iMovie, but it's also and my mom has done this. You can like she does this with her friends sometimes. You go into the store and they teach you how to use stuff, and it's not just. It, you know, like, it's like, this is how you unlock your phone. It's like, this is how you do photography and music and coding and app design. They have a course that is essentially based on the WWDC session from a few years ago on how Apple's prototyping team makes up apps. Like here's Keynote and there's someone with their hand on a toaster and I press the toaster button and the guy over there pops it up. And is that a good user experience? Like it is <laughs> such good, valuable material that they give away for free yeah. and you couldn't get it for the last few weeks. And I'm so, I know it'll take a while to ramp up. I know it's not the same. Uh, Apple Apple stores have been re-engineered to be almost the opposite of social distancing. It's <laughs> right, like right, right. everything and huddle close together. So the more they can do like this is just more value for everybody. Yeah. Plus it, like they're, they're offering a lot of jobs. So you can apply now on Apple to do this, to be able to work from home to be the voice of Apple. I'm gonna put the link so that Lori, you can put <laughs> it down. Oh, did you? Perfect. Yeah. So if you're looking for work and you love your passion for, for Apple products, you can be one of their at-home advisors. So you can be an at-home advisor, a team manager, an area manager. Like these are jobs that you can do from your home and then help other people from their homes. And so if you're looking for a little bit of income, this is like wonderful. Like they're giving back and then giving back again. So you don't have to worry about your tech not working. If you can't make that, you know, your FaceTime is off and you don't know why they're offering these services, but also people are out of work and a lot of people are out of work. And so this is really wonderful. Yeah, and Georgia, I actually didn't realize what link that you were dropping in there. So please feel free to do that because um, I don't have that link in front of me. Oh, okay. So yeah. We'll need that one for sure. <laughs> Here we go. There we go. So we'll have the link on the show. So if you're looking for work and you love Apple products and you wouldn't be listening to this show um, just to see our pretty faces if you did not, <laughs> this is wonderful. And they're opening up that experience because they need more people. That's awesome. Yeah. And, and like you're saying, especially at a time when a lot of people are getting laid off, the option to have another means to to get to have some income without having to go, you know, like, like delivery driving, which is mm -hmm. really great that people are doing that for us right now, because I couldn't yeah. live without the people who are delivering things to me right now, but that's also dangerous. And yeah. so being there, here's an option where you don't have to be out in the world, but you can still be helpful to other people and also make some money. So yeah, and uh, you get a whole bunch of really great benefits as well. You get paid time away, you get discounts on products. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> and there's all kinds of wonderful re resources and career development that Apple gives you offers you wants you to do so that you learn more things. So this is a job that can become, you know, it can you you can grow in this position, but also you get great benefits at the same time. So I would have like everyone that watches the show should apply. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Not if you're right watching, now, like finish watching. But watch yeah. the show first, and then, or put <laughs> well, it together. Know. You can put this on the background while you apply, yeah. and then you can tweet to us, twirdle to us that you've applied and how it's going, <laughs> and you know. So, are you saying that Ectac, Mako, Gavin Fuentes, Viper, Deb Rule? I'm getting all these names wrong. Christopher. Oh, Christopher Close is here. How awesome! Adam yeah. Griffith. They should all be applying. Scott C. They should all be applying for this immediate immediately. Well, not well, if they are if we are looking to for work, if you already have a job and you're doing well, then don't worry, just keep on listening. But for those that need, 
it's a wonderful thing to Joe be able Keller to has that radio voice. He could do this. Yeah. We yeah. need him though, but he could do this. Yeah. yeah, yeah leave us. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the fear flows through Lori's eyes. <laughs> yeah, please don't. Please don't. <laughs> don't leave us. He could do one at lunchtime. Apple creative pizza. <laughs> um, so, no, Christopher, don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> don't, you, don't, you, don't. don't leave We're us. Losing all of I, our people. I just want to point out really quickly, Chris has been such a, a absolute joy to have around iMore. He's been working for us so for, great. I don't know, has it been six months now? Um, covering HomeKit specifically. And the stuff that he discovers and teaches us on how to use HomeKit has been so great. I know, Joe, I, I think, have the two of you worked together on some of the HomeKit series stuff? Uh, no, not yet, but I've edited a number of his pieces and it's always very educational. Yeah, yeah, Chris has been amazing. So thank you, Christopher. And um, remind me what your um, your personal website page is so that we can sh do a shout out. You put it in the in the comments right now and we'll give the shout out for your personal page too because he also has his own um, home kit related website. That's really great. Oh, so. can I show you what I did real quick because it's home kit related? This yes. Is, so I, I used to have Hue lights behind me. But yeah. uh, when I shoot with my big camera at 24 frames per second, 180 degrees uh, for the for the capture rate, they would, uh, you know, George's husband spotted this immediately. They would sort of roll, and it was distracting for people. So I got these fancy production lights. They look like lightsabers. I love them so much, but they're not HomeKit enabled. But then I realized that I could plug them into something that was, and then set up a room so I can do this. Hey Siri, turn on the studio. And all the so all the backlights and the hair so light. Pretty. Oh man, that's great. Your house that looks is. so colorful now. It's beautiful. So then that does that mean that you had to plug each and every one of those lights into some sort of home kit enabled plug? I would have, yes, but I, what I did is I got the Eve power bars, which aren't cheap. They're like a hundred and something bucks, but they have three plugs and you can co control them together or separately. Nice. So I have three lights behind me. God, why is pointing so hard in the mirror <laughs> universe? I have three lights behind me that are plugged into one power bar and this one and this one that's plugged into the other power bars. And and the Eve, the Eve uh, bar, is that what it's called? The Eve plug bar? I can't power, remember yeah, the power, power like bar. Yeah. So the one of the great things about that, and it's really important to point out, is not all dual um, smart plugs let you use them separately. Usually you can turn everything on or everything off, but I love that you can put turn on, you know, plug one, but not plug two or plug three. That yep. that's fantastic. That's like invaluable. So definitely uh a good little bonus there. Renee Del Fugo, good name, Renee, is asking what would have happened if it hadn't worked back then. I, I would have blamed Siri. <laughs> oh, I would it would have, have definitely Siri been Siri's fault. Lift bus, Siri under, drop bus. Yeah. Uh, that's easy. That. Yeah. Oh, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> of course. There we go. <laughs> so another big thing, I, I'm telling you, everything just happened this morning. It was, it's, I, I, woke up and I started kind of checking out all the news of the week so that we can have things to talk about this morning. I was like, there hasn't been a lot of news this week. And then this morning, just everything dropped. Another big deal that just happened that Apple just announced was that they are collaborating with Google um, to create an API to help uh, track infections um, and 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 supply this information to the organizations that need the information to help us understand um, how COVID nineteen is transmitted. And it, there's there's a lot to unpack here, Renee. Did you actually read this press release already? Yeah, I, I mean, like, so when people saw it, I think the initial reaction was, "Oh no, privacy!" Because one of the big and this really depends on where you fall on it, because there are some people who believe that the fear raised by COVID-19, like it would a terrorist attack or a natural disaster, is going to allow us to uh, give over our privacy, um, mm -hmm. you know, make it easier to justify it. And that's that old saying, you know, those who will surrender security, uh, sorry, those who will surrender security for privacy deserve neither. Um, so that was my first, the, the first reaction of a lot of people is like, what does this mean for privacy? And I think we're going to have to base our initial reaction on Apple's reputation here, because there there's very little information in this about the, how it's going to work. This is mostly that it's working and that Apple and Google are coming together to create this joint API. And it's going to be a hard choice because South Korea has shown that using 
a very sophisticated tracking has allowed them to move through the the, the great flattening and into like a, a lowering of the of the cases much more quickly. But in North America, it's not that we're paranoid about this. It, it's been shown that they abuse this stuff. Like we've we've had like the the reports from um, Edward. Uh, help me Snowden. Name. Snowden. Yeah, yeah, Snowden, and from other places, and we've seen already the Justice Department, you know, try to get exempt, expe special powers. There, there's a whole bunch of stuff that, like, it's not paranoia if they're out to get you. It really isn't. So I think this is going to be one of those trust but verify things where they say they're going to roll it out by May. Some people were upset by that because they're like, oh God, we're going to have to be doing this in May still. Yes, yes, this is still going to be a thing in May. Yeah. It's like no one is going to unsnap Thanos' COVID fingers and you know <laughs> put everything back to normal. Yeah. 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 I don't know. This, this really, I, I don't know. It's like, I trust Apple. I don't trust Google. This is not comforting to me. It's everywhere. Why? Like people aren't even, they're not like, what we need to do is ramp up the amount of people that are getting tested so that everyone can get tested. In Montreal, we have like drive throughs like you can drive mm -hmm. in, you get swabbed and then you, you continue going and you can find out whether um, you're treated or not. And they need to make enough testing kits so that pretty much everyone should be tested so that they know. So I don't know how tracking this, it's everywhere. It's like, there's like, <laughs> like I, I think that maybe Nunavut in Canada doesn't have any cases, but like pretty much it's everywhere. So I don't understand how this is a benefit. What are they tracking? Well, again, there, there wasn't a lot of details in the press release. Let's go to the press release now and see if I can find some information that specifically can, so, Here's a sentence that might, or a paragraph that might help. Since COVID-19 can be transmitted through close proximity to affected individuals, public health officials have identified contact tracing as a valuable tool to help to contain its spread. So with that sentence, I think the implication here is that if we can find out where um, the, you know, patient zero in, in that way of, of a spread is, we can better immediately isolate that area and stop the spread from going further. Did you see right? the Korean thing? Like what they did was they, yeah. and they were prepared because they had SARS and they had the horribly named Middle Eastern respiratory infection. So they were actually, unlike most of our non very competent governments, they were super prepared for this. And they immediately tested people, tracked them, figured out everyone that they'd gone to and started mapping the spread of the infection mm -hmm. and then doing focused isolation, which is let them get out of social distancing much. And again, you are making a huge sacrifice by doing this. They decided as a as a society that they were they were willing to allow this tracking to get through um, to get through COVID nineteen faster. It's a decision that you know it's, it's it's worth arguing viciously and vociferously. But they they use the tracking technology to minimize the amount of people that had to be put under isolation, which makes sense before this has already hit a contagion effect and it's a pandemic. That's great. That's a great idea when there is a patient zero and that you can then find out. I think that they can also use it to find out if there's a huge party where everyone's going to get sick at the same time. But uh, like 80% of the population is going to get this, which is fine. Most people are going to be okay. We want to just slow that down. Everyone should be at home. So I understand the don't have a big party or a wedding and everyone gathers and they could maybe gather the data of whatever, 16 phones in one location that were coming from different locations to enter in. But this is way past the, you know, we can now stop the spread of this. We need to just slow it. Everyone should be at home and stay there. But now giving up our privacy for authoritarian governments to be able to use, there is very little benefit in comparison to at the beginning. And if they'd started this in January, I'd be all for it. Well, but I think it's the loosening now. I think they want to do it as schools and stuff start to open so that if they see any hot spots flash up. For well, not now, now, but eventually they're going to have to. And there they? will be a risk of, well, I mean, like next year, like, like, like at some arbitrary point in no. the future. Are you going <laughs> to keep this alive forever, right. George? Am I stuck at home until I die? See. You no, but listen, people should be we should we need to deal with education. We need people to to choose to this. Let's be honest. Once you've already attended the party, it's too late. Well, Drew in you the chat room is saying it's good for essential people, people doing essential services. So if someone at a someone in a hospital or someone at a, at a, a, a um, grocery store tests positive, they can do target tracing with those people. But again, everyone's like well you fight with drew in the chat room i'm i'm gonna be nice to him most people are gonna be asymptomatic <laughs> so it doesn't and no one's getting tested so they won't even know we're giving up yeah, all we of our privacy and Korea there's not enough test. to know people that are 
ill or not ill. I believe Korea had a test for the first person. Like the first person came in with symptoms and they had a test ready because they were ready. They were recorded. really well prepared yeah. and did a great job of it. But now it's too late. Like the genie's out of the bottle. You can't stick it back you in. You remind me of that very famous scene from the newsroom where the guy comes in and says, someone that was born today is going to die from massive failure of the earth. And he goes, oh, so what can we do about it? Nothing. Well, what about lowering? Oh, that would have been great 20 years ago. No, stay home. So the, the answer to this is stay home and chill, but you don't have to give up your privacy. Say, say, the, too late. <laughs> hey, this, this Georgia, you, you know, you're on my wavelength here. Georgia Dow properly paranoid. That's <laughs> that's what you know. I'm with you. I don't trust any of this, even though I do trust Apple mostly with my privacy. I, you know, I'm. But they're, they're partnering with Google, are. right? That's the yeah. thing, Only right? because they believe it won't be effective if it's not on Android as well as iOS. But so many is people it, have Android phones. The benefit to this is almost nil, and the giving up of our privacy is huge. And they're so, not going to give it back. Let's just say it. Once they get the keys, they don't give you back the car. There, the, the, I would say there's a couple of things in here. One, it's I think that the, it's supposed to be an opt-in. I don't think it's something that's going to be mandatory on every every single phone. I think, from what I understand, it's an opt-in tracing. Um, and number two, anybody who has Google Maps on their phone, they already have all that. They already have all this information, so they're already tracing you. And yeah. even though I know, I actually deleted, finally deleted Google Maps because I I decided to make the the make the plunge and try just using Apple Maps. And and I know Renee has been doing it forever. Georgia, I think that you also are only on Apple Maps, right? Uh it's I'm gonna just say something really really horrible. So say yeah, my I know what you're gonna say. My say husband it. moved to Waze just because when we traveled like Apple, both of them were just points of failure and we couldn't get lost while we were trapped before this all happened. So we, <laughs> we gave up our data to make sure that we were safe and we were going to get to where we had to get going. So yeah. So he uses ways and he loves it. And it's think, think about it like that, Georgia. I'm, I'm, I'm glad that Joe's on your side because it's good to hear that it's a little more like even, and it's not just a bunch of people like, no, Georgia, you're wrong. So I'm glad Joe's on <laughs> like your side. Like usual shows are. <laughs> But think about it like this. You you installed Waze because you needed the safety to get you where you were going. So think about installing or opting in to COVID tracing as a way to keep the community at large safe. Here, Georgia, you yeah. say stay at home, don't go yeah. out. Yeah. But guess what? A lot of people aren't going to do that. And so yeah. here's a way that could potentially, but no one hopefully. Gonna, just gonna they're asking it. why you're using Waze if nobody can try I'm it. not using Waze. My, well, this my was a long time ago. It, and it's before this. Like, yeah. let's just say we're not, we're not leaving anywhere. So, but, but um, like, I forgot where I was going. I was too stuck in Waze there. <laughs> I lost my train of thought. It's rare her ways. <laughs> I lost my ways with Waze. <laughs> Um, so yeah, I think all of your concerns about privacy are a big deal and they're definitely something to worry about. And on, on one hand, we trust Apple, but on the other hand, Apple just shook hands with the devil. So yeah. I get it. Like, it seems yeah. kind of scary, but we definitely have to see how this plays out. It's and not it's expected like, isn't it to the be. People that are going to do a big party and stuff are not going to opt in anyways. So it's just going to be the ones it's, that are going to stay home that would choose to do this. Like if you're going to go to a big party, I don't think they're going to have something that the government can track. Like if I you're don't, about to commit a life of crime, you're not giving the government. They're doing it already. Didn't you see that map that Google post, posted showing hotspots just based on, yeah. on uh, Google yeah. location services? Yeah. And it's like, all the beaches, ooh, and then you, very you can watch the beaches when they had the beaches open and then people traveling. And then you can see the spread of illness from where all of the people that attended this group beach party then got everyone else sick and you can just see it spreading. It's like the game, you know, it's like watching pandemic while you're in a pandemic. <laughs> yeah, cool, that's creepy. All right, so you just ruined this really great thing that Apple is doing for me. Now I'm freaked out. <laughs> oh, uh, there's, I think that's there, are people who are the there are people tearing through the documents and they say that it, that it is being designed as privacy in mind. They're Once concerned it's given to Google. Well, no, but the thing is, well, I mean, the, once you control the, so hold on, the, um, the, their, their concern is what could be built off of this mm -hmm. more than yeah, what once, it does. Like once the technology you can, you can exists, micromanage this and yes. keep it private. But once, you know, people get used to this kind of stuff, just in general population, will we be more willing to give up our privacy in general? Of course. Mm -hmm. Toothpaste, yeah. meat, tube. <laughs> <laughs> 
I'm going to send you all the documents, Georgia, because you'll you'll you actually read the EULAs. I just like I'll okay, read them. okay, I'll I know. Them. Again, like you know, we can make all kinds of rules, but if they're not enforced with something like if people would go to jail if they broke our privacy, then I would feel much more comfortable about people deciding to do it. But when they're going to get like you know a little tiny slap on the pinky, <laughs> eh, you know. You get to make a billion dollars, but I'm going to fine you one million dollars. Let me think about the math there. So, yeah, <laughs> I'd pay, yeah, I'd pay the fine if I if I'm that billion dollar corporation. Yeah, yeah. and the, the government doesn't fine. have to pay any fine because it's the government that would sue the government, and the government doesn't do that. We're not good at policing ourselves. Yeah. So the world is moving toward a dystopia. Got it. We are in it. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> I'm usually the positive one. Am I usually the positive one? I'm not <laughs> I know. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You got me. You got me. So let's get onto a positive a track show. real quick. What about the pets of Apple support? Have you seen this tweet? Now that's some happy content. That's some yeah. happy content. I Earlier this week. I Holly and Lori at CES because they were doing the pets of CES and now I have the yeah. pets of Apple support. But, and it's pretty cute. So Apple support tweeted a couple of days ago um, how to take pictures of your pet because guess what? Now that we're all sitting around at home, we're just staring at our dogs and cats and watching how dumb or adorable they are because this is, well, not for us who work at home, but for people who don't usually work at home, they're realizing how dumb and adorable their pets are. And so Apple just, the Apple support, they just put out a little how to take portrait pictures of your pets for those who have phones that support pet portraits. And then they just put a string of all of their adorable pets all throughout, including a plant, by the way. Well, the first, <laughs> the first one, it. the second one below the, of the of the pets of Apple support is a beautiful plant. Um, but I did think that was funny. At first I thought, is there like a, a, an insect on there that is their pet that I can't see? But no, I think their pet is their plant. Could be an aphid. <laughs> so, uh, they, they, there's, they're pretty adorable. There's some really, really cute looking pets in this one. And uh, I definitely want to say if, if, uh, if anybody wants to send me pictures of their adorable pets, my Twitter handle is at Appaholic, A-P-P-A-H-O-L-I-K. Send them to me anytime. I love pictures of, cat, of cats and dogs and pets. They always make me happy. So. And the nice thing is that all of the shelters right now are empty. Shelters are just running dry because people are thinking one is, well, hopefully they don't like don't return the pet after this, but people are getting to spend the time to be able to train an animal, spend time with an animal, especially if you're isolated and you're alone. It's really hard, like just to be hugged and cuddled by something. It can be really difficult. So a lot of people have it decided was to new, They were saying the shelters were at an all time low because I did paying. not hear about yeah. that. Yeah, they're so they're mostly empty. It's hard to find you know, a shelter animal right now, which is And great. a web camera, a web camera, a sheltered animal and toilet paper. <laughs> well, a sheltered animal, I'm okay with that. They're <laughs> uh, shelter those animals in place with you. That's, yes. that's wonderful. I like shelter to hear in that. Pet, in pets. Yeah. I hadn't heard that, that uh, information yet. So that's really great. So let's see what we can move on to every, I wanted to do, Oh, here's another um, great thing that Apple is doing and you can't, Squash this one for me, Georgia. <laughs> She's gonna try. <laughs> there is a um, an Challenge event accepted. <laughs> There's an event that's coming up on April 18th at 5 p.m. Pacific time, 8 p.m. Eastern time, as part of the Global Citizens website, and it's called uh, One World Together at Home. It's a benefit event that is going to be starring quite a few. Uh, well-known names, including uh, Lady Gaga, which I've been I've been told I kind of look like her a little bit. What do you think? You're way better looking than Lady Gaga. Well, I mean, she's pretty gorgeous. So like that's kind of the high bar there. But so also Alanis Morissette, Billie Eilish, Elton John, John Legend, Keith Urban and Steve, Stevie Wonder and more. They're all going to do a remote um uh, concert, which again, this totally appeals to me because I, this is something that me and my my friends are trying to do things like this. So I love it. And um, Apple will be streaming it um, from the TV app. It'll be uh, free to watch. So you can go to the TV app and watch this on, um, let me repeat again, Saturday, April 18th at 5 p.m. 
Um, and they also, Apple also donated 10 million to the, um, the donation cause. Um, in addition to a number of other organizations that have donated, they've already reached 35 million um, as of yesterday. And this was just announced just a couple days ago. So that's that's a pretty pretty nice chunk of change to go toward um, battling relief efforts and battling the coronavirus pandemic. Can I pimp something? I feel like I keep adding my own nonsense onto the show. I love it. I love it. At uh, eight, 5 p.m. Pacific, 8 p.m. Eastern uh, tonight for four hours, I'm joining a charity stream for... The uh, the something at home home something at home uh, projects all money raised will be donated to COVID nineteen and I'll be playing Jackbox with a bunch of other YouTubers. Uh, Renee, that's fantastic. How will they find it, Renee? It's at the Watch Nebula. So you go to YouTube.com and the Watch Nebula page. I'll put the link uh, out on Twitter. I already put it out this morning, but I'll put it out again. And then you can watch me lose to Thomas Frank and Wendover and Nando versus the movies and a couple other people. Uh, real you engineering. All the smart people versus me. It's not fair. You might be surprised at how much you'll win at Jackbox. It's a, it's a, gr the great equalizer. No matter how smart you are, somebody else could just come up and swipe that from you just by getting an answer right on accident. So don't worry, you could still win. <laughs> it, was, it was mostly just a bunch of vlogger jokes. So we'll see how that goes. <laughs> I feel subtweeted, Lori. <laughs> <laughs> Joe, we played Jackbox. The iMore staff got together last Friday and played Jackbox, and Joe just annihilated all of us. <laughs> twice. It was pretty great. Well, yeah, <laughs> twice. Like I was I Joe was had winning. to dig that in. He's like, yeah. mm. I was winning one of them and he just came in and took 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 just took it right out from under me. It was it was awful and wonderful and hilarious. He They're asking the chat room if it's going to be recorded. And yeah, it's it's going to be on, on YouTube streaming. So the video will just stay up. And there's one going on right now, the earlier version with Alex, a low spec gamer and other Alex uh, who does a science channel. Um, so uh, I'll, I'll put the link up and people can take a look. And I think you mentioned that it's youtube.com slash, slash watch nebula. I don't know if they have the URL yet because it's a brand oh, new channel. Okay. But, um, okay. Well, I think it, I you put might... it in my YouTube channel. And uh, yeah, so look for rec uh, look for it in Renee's YouTube channel, and I'm guessing maybe if you do a Google search, you might be able to find it that way. Yeah, and of course, Renee, how do they find show. your YouTube channel? Because it's it, new. YouTube.com/slash Renee Ritchie, and the charity is uh, Hope from Home. Hope from Home is it, the it's the big charity. one that Google is uh, backing for for everyone. It's basically the easiest way to do this on YouTube. Okay, that's so nice. That's sweet. I love this stuff. More of this. Yeah. Yes. And um, one last. Uh, sweet thing about Apple that, that I want to drop. I'm telling you, they're pulling up my heartstrings right now. It's just getting to me. Um, this month is the National Autism Acceptance Month. And I, I think I had mentioned before that um, the uh, Art of Autism, a website that is literally art-of-autism.com is a website that spotlights artists that are on the spectrum. And for the month of April, they've collaborated with Apple and they are they have a gallery that's called Created on iPad. You can find it on the homepage um, at where it spotlights, it spotlights um, autistic artists that are using an iPad and Apple Pencil. And a lot of them have never used an iPad or rarely used an iPad. Some of them have never even worked in digital media before. And they're, they put a new one up once a week. So it's five at a time. I think there's a total of 15. And this is round two is up right now. But you can also click back to the first set of gallery and just check out all the artwork that's there. So I just wanted to drop that in there real quick. That's You've been art. so good at sharing this stuff. I, it's close to my heart. So so it's art-of-autism.com. Just go to the homepage and then you'll see the created on iPad gallery in there and you can just check out all the great art that's out there. It's pretty beautiful. All right, let's move on to some juicy bits because I think we got to talk about that. I was going to t uh, mention the rumored new headphones that John Prosser had, had leaked, but then there's another one that popped up just this morning, which is another leak of a potential air... Air power pad that is being worked on. So, um, this guy has got some incredibly detailed leaks. He's either pulling the wool over on a lot of us, or he's got somebody on the inside that's really making Apple angry right now. I don't think he would ever, like, I don't think he would ever joke about this stuff because he cares so desperately about being right. 
Like, uh-huh, he that's true. like I was right four times. I was wrong once. I hate it when I'm wrong. So yeah. like, I don't think he'd ever put up anything that would be a joke because it would risk his reputation. Yeah. So like, it's always possible <laughs> that someone is pulling his leg, but like, I think he checks really carefully. Mm-hmm. And, uh, but the other thing is sometimes the information is nebulous. Like one team is still working on something and they haven't convinced whoever's in charge to do it. So they'll say it's being worked on, but someone on another team will say, no, it's not. So mm-hmm. like it's a, multi, it's a multi-headed Hydra. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the the new one today is the is working on another version of air power. And honestly, I think that it was it would be wrong to assume that Apple wouldn't have been constantly trying to work on a new version of air power. They, you know, took it off the production line because at the time they realized that there wasn't that the technology has just not caught up with what they were doing. But just in the last six months, um, dynamic and and sort of universal, um, air, uh, not air power, but um, like non-specific coiling of, of wireless charging has, has improved. So Renee, you actually have had some pretty good information back when the air power was first pulled off. Um, so talk about now with this rumor in place, what does it seem, does this seem like it could happen soon because of the new technology? Or do you think this is still kind of like way, way far off? It's just part of their process that they've been going through for a long time. So, I mean, they were working on air power for a long time. They had a bunch of prototypes that did different things. And the challenge really is the Apple watch because that's not Qi standard. When Apple made the Apple watch, <clears throat> Qi just wasn't good enough for them. Like it didn't charge fast enough and they had to, they added the magnet so that it would stay locked in place. And they basically supersetted it and their thinking was like the standard has some value that you could use any pad, but it will provide a suboptimal experience and we'd rather have the experience than the flexibility. And that's sort of, that's been good because the Apple Watch does charge really well and really conveniently, but it means now like even Apple is paying off that technical debt and they've tried different physical arrangements and different like criteria for it. Uh, And this looks like another one. Uh, he's saying the A11 chip. I don't know what that does differently unless they're using like some neural network stuff to to sort of figure out if it's an Apple Watch, which I, I'm not sure how that would work. But the basics is still the same. It's that they ha- the, the dream of air power was no matter where you put down the device and no matter which device you put down, it will just charge. Like there'll be no nothing that you have to do. It will do all the heavy lifting. Two phones, phone and an iP- and a, a, a Apple Watch and AirPods, no problem. We'll figure it out. You just put it down and go on with your day. Whereas the ones that are out are like, iPhone must be placed here. AirPods <laughs> must be placed here. Apple Watch, not on this one. This one over here, separate unit. Thank you. You know, like, it's very precise. So this is one of those things that's always coming, never quite arriving. And until they fix that, I mean, I'm sure they're still working on it. Even if they were told not to, I'm sure there's people still working on it because that was a huge hit in the Pride in the pride uh, jumblies. Yeah, chip. So uh, it, not surprising at all. Will it work? We'll have to see. I think part of the problem is it's not the technology so much as that the Qi standard is so behind the times because there are companies out there. Um, I interviewed um, the CEO of Ara A I R A. Um, they're working on a universal dynamic wireless charging um, pad that. It, 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 it's the, exactly what you're talking about. No matter where you put it, it actually like moves along these coils to find that device and then charge it. And even when there's more than one on it, it it like dynamically moves around to try to find the device and charge it. It's pretty impressive. But it, the the Qi standard is very specific that it's like a single coil and uses up you know this X number of power and can't have you know, all this other technology like layered on with it. So that's why our multi-charging wireless pads, they're like three coils side by side. I think there was one that had like a 20 coil, it was a 20 coil pad, but you saw that they were just these coils that were all laid on top of each other. It still didn't meet what the, it didn't fix the problem. All it did was just bombard a pad with a bunch of coils. And and the idea is that to to have like that kind of true wireless idea, that dynamic wireless idea is it's that you don't have to find the coil. It's that the the charging finds your device. That's the key there. I apologize for this, but breaking news: Tim Cook has just responded to Georgia. <laughs> okay. Georgia, I'm adding the part about it being towards you. Georgia 
Contact tracing can help slow the spread of COVID-19 and can be done without compromising user privacy. We're working with Sundar Pichai and Google to help health officials harness Bluetooth technology in a way that also respects transparency, transparency and consent. Georgia, I, I added sound, the Listen, I, I, the words sound really, really nice, but as we know, words mean nothing. And I'm, I apologize because I think Tim Cook is a wonderful and very kind person, but this is still trusting Google and they've already lied to us like maybe what a gazillion times. So maybe if someone lies to you a whole bunch of times, you want to be really extra careful before you give up data for this. And again, I was typing that, but it's too it's, big for Twitter. I'll have to it's tell everywhere. Them later. It's everywhere. So now the tracing is much more useless and you don't, we're not testing enough people to know to trace them to see where they are. So again, cost benefits. I'm still there. Sorry, Tim. I appreciate your reply. <laughs> it's okay. He's on a conference call now. Oh uh, yeah. Appreciate it though. I'm sure that he's taking everything that you say to heart, though. I would. I think Tim Cook right now is reconsidering the the collaboration just because of you, Georgia. <laughs> Sundar, Sundar, good morning. Good morning, <laughs> Sundar. Listen, I was talking to Georgia. <laughs> I again, you can like, yeah. I'll, no, I'll leave it. I'll leave it. It's. Fun. I will say, Tim. I will say, Tim. I have benefited greatly from listening to Georgia. So if you're at all on the fence, listen to Georgia. That's true. Wow. But you, you can't beat that. Listen, listen to people smarter than me that are talking about I how was privacy Rocket is really earlier important. this week, and the, the the entire cast of Rocket said that Georgia was a secret weapon, and if I just listened to her, I would succeed. <laughs> That's, <laughs> That's totally true. Facts. That's totally brief. Um, <laughs> yeah. No, I think that th I think it's wonderful. I think it's wonderful that they're you know bringing out masks. I think that we need to produce more. We need to produce more testing kits. That's most important. And. Um, again, once you've, it's it's very easily spread. So once you're hanging out with people, it's nice to know that they're hanging out with people, but it's too late. <laughs> so don't go out. That's that's more important no, than- No, don't go out. Oh, Truly stay home, don't go out. stay home and do things and remotely. And if you need- Fix air work. power. And fix yeah. air power, yeah. So before we move on that's to great. the next set of rumors that John Prosser has been yeah. uh, <laughs> dropping on all of us. Siri answer, sorry. Apologies, guys. <laughs> I wanted to tell you about our um, sponsor for this week, which is Thrifter. So if the three of you will hop on over to thrifter.com, find yourself a selection that you think is amazing, that you I'm want us to talk it, about. Even though Joe's picks have taken up all the airtime recently. <laughs> well, Joe had the last two, so I think Renee's going to- Lori's just to trying to keep us busy so that we don't interrupt because I'll interrupt. <laughs> exactly. Thrifter offers a fantastic way to save money on everything from gadgets to home goods by shopping based on value, not hype. You can sign up at thrifter.com to get thoughtfully selected tech deals from places like Amazon and Best Buy daily without all of the fluff. So, Georgia, give me a pick. If you, so, if if it makes it easier, click on that deals up in the right-hand corner of well, that Well, I already I already found one that I'm I'm actually looking for, so um, last week they had like a um, crock pot, which is good for like everything, but I've been looking for an air fryer. So these things are really cool. There's a 50% discount. So if you're going to get one, get it for a 50% discount. Um, and it's a large, so you don't have to fry. You can have fried food that is not fried in oil. I love so, me an air fryer. Yes. Yeah. Temperature control, tense, transparent window, non-stick coating. We use the crock pot constantly but we've heard that just as cool as a crock pot is an air fryer so 50 percent off mm -hmm. yeah that's that a really good deal it. in fact it was through thrifter on black friday that i bought my foodie ninja or ninja foodie i can never mm -hmm. remember which which it's either ninja foodie or foodie ninja i can't remember but i i it, it, the discount was like 65 percent off and i could not mm -hmm. pass that offer up it was through thrifter that i found out about it so it was a really nice deal Renee, do you have anything that you want to pick real quick? Yeah. Uh, well, first, they're doing a great job listing all the free TV content that all the different networks are putting up that's available. And that's always great. You know, Apple TV, HBO, like there's just so much good stuff on there, Disney Plus. But they have AirPods, the second generation AirPods at 23% off, which is almost 25% off. So you can <laughs> save like 35, 36 bucks. And if you do watch that video with the cast of Hamilton, all in the Zoom singing. Most of them, at least half of them, are wearing AirPods. So I'm just, I'm just saying, if they're cool enough for Hamilton, they're cool enough for you. 
<laughs> it's pretty good. So if you sign up for Thrifter's newsletter, you can receive exclusive insider information delivered to your inbox with these amazing deals every day. Some of this, these include codes to get the discount that aren't easy to find. So it's pretty nice. You get that exclusive information before anybody else does. Go to thrifter.com to sign up for their newsletter. Thank you to Thrifter for sponsoring this week's episode of The iMore Show. So let's talk a little bit more about these leaks, these secret, knowledgeable, in-depth things that John's been talking about. John Prosser, once again, this was earlier this week, uh, two day, three days ago now, um, he put out some detailed information about some new headphones that are going to be launching throughout this year. One of them is something we kind of already oh, have. Oh, can I set it up so that you can answer, Lori, because you're the audio <laughs> expert? Got it. Go for it. So there's two new products he says are coming out. One is over the ear AirPods, studio pods, whatever, something like Beats Studio. The other are what he's calling AirPods X, which might be like Beats X or might be like Power Beats Pro. So basically saying Apple's expanding the AirPods lineup. And I'm curious, Lori, because you are our resident audio expert, how do you feel like this and how would you want Apple to make them so that they actually give you the audio experience you want? Yeah, so um, just like you're saying, they're, it's, it sounds like what they're doing is making an Apple lineup that's very similar to what already exists in the Beat lineup, the Beats lineup. I do not think that these are going to be Beats headphones because though, I'm, and I'll say this to till my grave, Beats has significantly improved their audio quality. They don't have that bass heavy sound that they had before. They, they listened to the public and made massive changes to make their headphones much, much better. So put with that in mind, I think that the Apple headphones are going to have a different sound because even though there's a, a much better balance in Beat head, Beats headphones, I think that the Apple headphones are going to be tweaked and calibrated in a slightly different way, maybe not to be so pop music heavy, but maybe to be just a more well-rounded. Honestly, I don't think that the Apple headphones are going to be as good sounding as the Beats headphones today, because I think the Beats headphones really do stand out. But they're not going to sound the same. They're definitely not going to look the same. They're almost definitely only going to come in white. <laughs> <laughs> like you no know, Mickey Mouse, right? Like because there was there, there's this argument going on uh, between Prosser and Nine to Five Mac about whether Apple's going to subsume Beats or keep Beats. And I always thought like Beats was the fun brand because there's not going to be an Apple Mickey Mouse or Apple Olympic Teams version of the Studio Pods, but they're totally fine with Beats doing it. Yeah, but I mean, if if that were if that were going to be the case, we would not have AirPods Pro and Powerbeats Pro. That I mean, that's an example of two separate sets of headphones that do almost the exact same thing, but appeal to do to two different audiences. I think Apple just wants to take advantage of the knowledge that they've learned from the company Beats and apply that to the technology that they have with the Apple stuff, so that they can make headphones that are for Apple people that don't want Beats stuff. It it makes a lot of sense to me that they would do something like that. Yeah, um, and. It Apple is, like many large companies, very data-driven a lot of the time. And um, if the data says keep beats, they'll keep beats. And if it says they can get rid of beats, they'll get rid of beats. It's kind of It's pretty simple, simple Joe. Yeah. <laughs> so definitely a good point. They're going to keep beats until beats is not a lucrative uh, yeah. company anymore. And then they'll slowly... Get rid of it. <laughs> yeah, and that's I love, I love Joe for... breaking it down right, yep. just straight yeah. to Real the point. simple, real simple. It's not about love. <laughs> yeah. It's about... My question for Joe, though, is like, I was talking to Viper about this last night. I wonder if Apple anticipated the success they got with AirPods. Like, they might, might have thought that only, like, hardcore iPhone users would be willing to pay for AirPods, and they'd have to keep Beats around for the mainstream. But now, like, Beats, uh, sorry, AirPods are the mainstream. Does that change the calculus? Yeah, and... Again, I, I think Apple has, you know, Apple has these numbers. Apple knows what what this data is saying. So um, I think the success of AirPods and AirPods Pro probably, um, if if it does indeed signal the demise of the Beats brand, it probably hastened that. But um, I, I would doubt it was the I would doubt it was the plan to begin with. But, you know, that's just me. And and really, like, there's room in this world for so many different types and brands of headphones. 
that you don't have to be the number one headphone brand to still be a lucrative company. When you think about, you know, like with with an with the iPhone, I'm it's I guess you can kind of you can think of it as the iPhone and all of the Android phones that are out there. There's going to be you know three or four that rise to the top, but they're not the only smartphones out there. And then Apple has their brand and their version that looks this certain way and has this certain certain um, sort of a not uh, it's beats like airpods for android yeah beats <laughs> airpods for android yeah <laughs> or for athletes because like they just don't know over the year but we'll see i mean around we'll see we'll see what they come up with yeah and i think there was even a long a, a leak a while back of what they what they look like right there what it was in some sort of somebody like reverse engineered some code or something like that too to get iOS 14, I guess. yeah, to get what it looked like, and like they look pretty good. I don't think I'm an over the ear headphones kind of girl, though. They're that's a little too big for me. I've done it, I've tried it. It feels like I'm a little kid with headphones that are too big for me. They're just See, a I little like, too much. I really like over the ear, like I'm like big cans. Like yeah. I I find them very like again most of the time I find them very comfortable on the ear I don't like and unfortunately in the ear I've been like because I've been using them so much I've been doing so many calls a day for sessions um, and sometimes I don't put my my earbuds in just because they cause earache but mm -hmm. I'm going through some serious earache like I might bring down my 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 uh, AirPods but you know my pros. With yeah. on-ear headphones, I tend to they tend to push my glasses into my head. So mm, over-ear oh. headphones are really better for me. That's how you like. What yeah. are your headphones, Joe? What are you wearing right now? These are I don't remember the the number, but these are um, Audio Technica from Oh yeah. years ago. So yeah. nice neutral. They last a long time. Did you say ten years ago? Oh no, uh, no, not ten years ago. Oh okay, like, like three or four years ago. Still, oh, that's good. That's what's good. Phoenix, I noticed I was watching this discussion with with audio files, and some were saying they liked flat profiles, but other people were saying flat profiles are unlistenable to them, and they need something that has Can a little. You explain like, first what that means for those. No, I don't know. I'm gonna I'm gonna say it wrong okay. so that Lori can okay. laugh and correct me. But like in video, if you record at the high end, you use a flat profile because it looks like gray mush, but it preserves so much data that you can you can see everything that's happening, and you can tune it to the way that you like it. When people master music, they tend to use flat profiles. And audio files like those because there's no characteristics in it. It's just exactly what it's supposed to be. But my understanding is that humans don't listen that way. Like we like it to be sweet and and boomy and yeah. See, I, I still mean, don't understand, but thank you. I appreciate I, the like audio, Georgia. The the the, the the like analogy would be listening to a record on vinyl versus listening to a CD. Um, the the way that kind of the, that it just t it cuts the tops and bottoms off of sound so that it kind of fits into a tighter package in your ears or for your ears. Um, I'm trying. Yeah, I'm trying to use words that <laughs> that make sense to like let your brain kind of wrap around it. Um, I definitely think Renee, it it's it's a personal preference. I don't even. I wouldn't even say the audiophiles prefer one versus another. I think that and and. You, you can at me on this because I'm probably going to make a couple of people angry. That's a pretentious way to imply that you know more about sound than other people do because <laughs> it's it's all it's just all about what sounds good to you and what feels yeah. good to you. And and when people say things like you know the flat sound is the best sound, it's it's that it's the only it's the purest sound and the only way you should listen to it. They are just l trying to look down their nose at you. So well, they're all just intended. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. It's that's not that's it's it's a preference thing. Like you, some people like it one way, and some people like it another way. I actually prefer, for example, listening to vinyl records because it has like sort of that the pops and scratches of of natural recording sound, and I like it better than overproduced mu music. Like in the '90s, there was a lot of music that just kind of had an overproduced frames per second because that's what a movie looks like, you know. And we can do 60 frames per second even on YouTube now, but it's a movie to me looks like 24 frames per second because yeah. that was the limitation yep. of the time that they were created. Yeah, I'll, I'll and say it, I, that feels weird when we watched uh, The Hobbit, and that looked that like was 120, it was, wasn't it? That it was, was like a, you could see the makeup. 
It was like 48 frames per second is how is, it was. I forget. I, I don't remember, but it was really took me out of the movie. So <laughs> that kind of makes me understand a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. So, and it's a preference because there's some people who live for that extra frames per second and think that that's the best way to watch movies. So it, it's definitely just, you know, what you, what you like the most. So. Why is there no record like vinyl mode on all our Apple stuff? Like on from everything from iPad, like you just, just press, press a button it. and it has a computational si uh, sound model. No, 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 no! <laughs> don't do that! Don't do that to me. You have now yeah. done a cardinal sin, Renee. <laughs> yeah. Don't you dare do that to well, me. Well, no, like in Final Cut Pro, I can press a button and it will take other frame rates and do an optical flow analysis and turn them into the frame rate that I want by filling in other frames. You know, and it's not perfect. But like I should be able like to take a uh, Apple Music and just put the whole thing into vinyl mode. So like when I'm jogging, I can listen to vinyl. Like you couldn't jog with a record player in each. Hand. Like well, I guess some people could. Maybe, maybe Lori can could. with like a record a record player and an amp in each hand. But like you could you should be able to have a similar sound when you're jogging just by pressing that vinyl button on your uh, Apple Music. Yeah. No. I I don't think. No. I she I don't know. Work. I don't know. I'm gonna have to think on this one because that sounds like the worst thing ever. Because for me, the difference is that the record that plays through your loudspeakers there's it's a whole thing it's and, experiential yeah and when you put music in your ears or on your ears and it's from your digital device to your digital headphones to me it needs to stay within that digital sphere and and i think that it would d just diminish the quality of the of the digital music if you tried to do something it would like cheapen that, it so. yeah we have just a little bit more time. There's so much to talk about and so much we didn't get to. Renee, you mentioned that um, there are now some TV Plus shows that you can watch for free. So even if you do not have a subscription to TV Plus, if you didn't get your, your one device before the um, free year ran out, which... Is that still happening? I, I I think they have extended that and are still allowing people to have a one year sub subscription to Apple TV Plus for free. But if you don't have access to TV Plus right now, there's a handful of TV shows that you can watch for free right now. If you go to and Apple, one movie and one movie, <laughs> that's true. Um, Apple dot com slash. Uh, wait, that didn't work. Hold on. It is sorry. Uh, let me, I'm missing it. I clicked. Oh, you know why? I, this is something that I discovered recently. If you click on Apple TV links from your computer, it just takes you to the Apple TV plus web page. It doesn't actually take you to the, to the page you're intending to go to in the Apple store, which if, I mean, I have TV plus, I have Apple to the Apple TV app on my Mac. It should open up the TV app on my Mac. Yeah and go to it, but it doesn't. So I feel like those apps still aren't fully formed. Yeah, definitely. So uh, my apologies, apologies, it's apple.co slash free for everyone. And you can stream the following music, movies, uh, Little America, Servant for All Mankind, Dickinson, Dickinson, Helpsters, Ghost Rider, Snoopy in Space, and the movie, The Elephant Queen. So that's pretty cool, that's like, Almost everything that came out on day one, I think it's only missing one or two. And actually, Little America is something that came out later. The servant, um, too, yeah. And the, the servant, servant so. is really good. I'm not I sure enjoyed it's international, the though. Like uh, some people told me they couldn't get it in other countries, so it might be U.S. It may only, not be. Not okay. Sure. Wow. Yeah. So if you don't get it, sorry. Yeah. Tweet um, us if you cannot get it versus if you can. So we yeah, can yeah. So we can people. So we can let people know about that. Um, so I think we are just about done with the day. It's been a lot. There's been a lot. We talked about a lot, even though it seemed like there wasn't a whole lot of news going on. So we're good at that. <laughs> at the end of this, I'd like to thank you, the three of you for joining me this week on the iMore show. It's been wonderful. You've had a lot to say. And can I just say we've had a robust community of chatters watching us live today. So thanks to every one of you. You're talking so much, I can't even keep track of everything that everyone said. And there's a few new names in there that I don't have never seen before. So and it's wonderful it's while we're doing the show. Like we read it. I don't, I'm not signed in, so I can't comment to it, but I, I read it and I appreciate everyone's comments. Yep. It's really nice. I, I'm, I'm keeping it uh, right next to me. I, I keep track of it. I know Renee, you've even commented on some things that people have said. And every time, you know, some things we just can't get to, but if you ask a question that we have the opportunity to talk about we definitely talk about it so 
So please join us and, and keep chatting because it's been really nice. And thanks to Jim Metzendorf for making us sound like magic. Every time we mess something up really bad, he's there to sweep up the mess and tell, pat us on the back and tell us that we're going to be okay. It's really nice. So thanks, thanks, Daddy Jim Metzendorf for taking care of us. He doesn't even use our voices. He just re-records a smarter show. <laughs> we haven't known, yeah. <laughs> he uses his own voice to do it. I'll He's take any more for my voice. <laughs> And one last thank you to everyone who listens to us, not live, but days after, weeks after. We really appreciate that you subscribe to us on iTunes and all the other podcast-related places. I think they used to call them podcatchers, but they don't even call that that anymore. That's it's, a, it's no longer a phrase. So wherever you get your podcast, thanks for listening to us. It's been really great that we get to keep doing this every week. And we do it for you, even though we also do it for us because we like to just get together and chat. And have a great week. It's been a lot of fun on the iMore show once again. Thank you all. Do-do-do-do.